Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our New Jersey's Chunchun One Prayer Visual. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Let's begin by greeting our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Chanjin Champomake Kyombe. Claro. We will now recite the family pledge first in Korean. Thank you. Number six. Our family, the owner of Channel Guk, pledges to become a family that moves heavenly fortune by embodying the heavenly parent and true parents and perfect a family that conveys heaven's blessings to our community by centering on true love. Thank you. Now for opening prayer, can I please ask Miss um, Anne Marie Myler to open us up in prayer, please? Let us pray. Dear beloved heavenly parent, we are here before you once again at the beginning of a new day. We are so grateful to be part of our worldwide community, to be aware of the true parents' existence and be able to study their teaching every day. We are so grateful to be unificationists, to have had the ability to understand, at least at the minimum, what you were trying to teach us. Heavenly Parent, today we live, we are living the last days and probably even the last days of the last days. And the world is in complete turmoil. Satan is making his last effort to stop the providence from going forward. But we are going forward. We are going forward with you, with our true father in the spiritual world, and with our true mother in this world. We are grateful, even if you so, so many of our young people have been able to be taught directly by true mother, hear her and see her and feel her heart so that they will be well equipped when we are not around, we the old people, their parents, for spiritual parents or physical parents, to be able to handle the 21st century and to bring into conclusion, victorious conclusion, the restoration of humankind. Heavenly Parent, this is a brand new day for, for most of us. And I pray along with all my brothers and sisters that we will be able to offer you a very good day, a day of gratitude, a day of true effort, a day of, of progress in the fulfillment of the providence at hand. We pray that True Mother will have a very good night's sleep, very peaceful evening and good night's sleep, and be able to regain all her energies for her next day. Namely, this I pray with everyone, and in the name of Anne-Marie Milo, blessed central family, adieu. Adieu. Thank you so much <clears throat> for that beautiful opening prayer. Okay, we will now begin with our morning light stretches. So let's begin by taking three deep breaths in and out. Okay, deep breath in and out. In and out. One more in and out. All right, and today, instead of focusing on stretching, we're gonna focus on massaging our body parts today, okay? So we'll start from the top. We'll start massaging our head. Okay, 10, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we go to your face. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And we'll go to our neck. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Your shoulders. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch side. Five, four, three, two, one. Now massage your arm. Five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Five, four, three, two, and one. And we'll massage your hands. Five, four, three, two, and one. Other hand. Five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. And then we'll do rotations for this one. We'll just hold it on one side first. Five, four, three, two, one, switch sides, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, in the last 10 seconds, you massage any other body part or stretch any body part you feel that needs it this morning. Needs a little bit of waking. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Okay, I hope everyone's wide awake, warmed up, and ready to share any appreciations and gratitudes you have for today. I will see you guys in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed their breakout room today. For my representative sharing, um, can I please ask Mrs. Arena to share your appreciation for today? Yes, uh, good morning. I'm grateful to be here this morning and uh, to join this uh, morning prayer video. Morning video. Yes, sir. I was reflecting on uh, the grace of having attended um, the Blue Dragon this weekend, but also to know and hear how the second gen are preparing to go to Korea. As yesterday, I was happened to be in the meeting. I was expecting this um, evening prayer vigil, and uh, actually they were having a briefing and preparation to go to Korea. What they expect, or what they are expected to do, and of course attending to Madam experience Korea, but to remember that is a, a holy place and they really do their very best in attending uh, to parents. So I was um, impressed and uh, of course, many had their own expectations maybe, but um, having been in Korea for some time, I, it was giving me an excitement to remember that experience and I'm really excited for them uh, to really, you know, attending to mother, but also to have fun. Yes, being in Korea. So that's my gratitude this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Serena, for sharing your appreciations for today. Okay, we will now be moving on to True Mother's Memoir. So please prepare your hearts and your minds as we listen to Dr. Ward as he shares True Mother's reading and his insights for today. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette, and good morning to all brothers and sisters. Uh, let's now uh, read today's passages from Mother of Peace. The Middle East includes the Holy Land where Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. It has been the home of eminent peoples whose flourishing civilizations led global culture. Today, however, it is marred by the bitterness of religious conflict with terrorist attacks sometimes taking the lives of innocent people. Trusting God for our safety, our Women's Federation for World Peace dove into the heart of the Middle East to build peace through reconciliation and love. From the late 1960s, unification men and women missionaries from Europe went out to countries in the Middle East, including Turkey, Jordan, Iran, and Lebanon. Some were arrested and some were deported, but others found ways to stay. Even so, those who entered Islamic countries that strictly forbade other faiths to proselytize risked incarceration, beatings, or worse from the authorities. Despite this, through the dedication, teaching, and service of our members, the local people came to understand them and gradually opened the heart, the doors to their hearts. By the mid 1980s, these missionaries brought eminent Muslim clergy to our assembly of the world's religions and council for the world's religions conferences. And these clergy in turn brought Muslim citizens from the Middle East and North Africa, sometimes hundreds at a time to attend 40 day divine principle workshops in New York in the early 1990s. Beginning in 1992, Islamic couples who were moved by the teachings of the principle gratefully received the marriage blessing. Upon this foundation, in November 1993, I traveled to Turkey to speak on uh, true parents and the completed testament age. People tried to deter me from visiting the Middle East, saying it would be extremely dangerous and that audiences would walk out if I delivered a speech that did not suit them. That did not deter me in the least, for I had gone through worse situations many times. Even if there is only one person waiting to receive me, 
I consider it my mission as God's mediator, the only begotten daughter, to go to the ends of the earth to meet that person and open for him or her the gate of salvation. Thank you very much. So what I'd like to do this morning is I'd just like to share um, a few reflections from some of the quotes from these passages that we've just reviewed. So if I can share my screen. Oops. So um, Mother begins this, this section by saying the Middle East includes the Holy Land where Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. And we know that for, for true parents, this part of the world is, is so precious, although it has many painful memories. But so many different things took place over the years based on true parents' um, investment. Uh, so many of the Mepi tours and the coronation ceremony for Jesus, uh, the burying of the cross there, all of those things were, were meant to help to comfort God's Han, God's suffering, because of the fact that things had not gone exactly in the way that that uh, providentially they could have gone if, if there had been a greater receptivity to Jesus. Trusting God for our safety, our Women's Federation for World Peace dove into the heart of the Middle East to build peace through reconciliation and love. I think that for almost, uh, I think it's now 27 years that um, our, our Women's Federation for World Peace has been having on a yearly basis a seminar dealing with how do we foster peace in the Middle East. And uh, my wife was involved in many of those seminars over the years. And uh, anyway, so many wonderful uh, women emerged from uh, from those seminars and from other uh, other other sources as well M Muslim and uh, Christian women from the Middle East who have made such a huge difference you know I think in, in terms of the provenance and in terms of really showing the 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 feminine side of our of uh, of God's nature and helping for to foster peace in a place which has been so torn apart by uh, masculine aggression, you know. Um, I think of uh, Dr. Rima Sara. Uh, she actually spoke at our seminary this year, and she's been a, a dear friend of my wife for, I think, about 25 years. She met her at a talk. My, my wife was speaking at Columbia University about 25 years ago, and she was talking about the significance of the family. And Dr. Sara, who, had, who, has, who served as the deputy executive director for UNICEF worldwide and had many special missions like with the Secretary General of the United Nations. She worked she worked very closely um, with a number of the Secretaries General as well. She she just came up to my wife afterwards and she said, oh, you spoke about the family. She said at the UN, we hear so little about the family nowadays. And really, she, the, the two of them bonded and uh, so many wonderful things Dr. Sally has done with our movement. She's come to Korea a couple of times, most recently in, in 2020, to, to attend the conference at that time. Uh, and this uh, this amazing attribute, I think, of women and, and this wonderful uh, decision by the True Parents to start the Women's Federation for World Peace has really been a, a powerful way, I think, to really turn the focus of, of the world and the focus of the province to women in anticipation of this time with the coming of the only begotten daughter. It says from the late 1960s, unification men and women missionaries from Europe went out to countries in the Middle East, including Turkey, Jordan, Iran, and Lebanon. Some were arrested and some were deported, but others found ways to stay. And, you know, we heard this, uh, beautiful testimony from uh, Dr. Michael Kiley and uh, Mrs. Maria Kiley about uh, the time that they spent in, in Tunisia and how they were uh, virtually uh, chased out. And uh, two of their children here, Inmei and Yung Guam, who were with them there, were born in the Middle East. They, they dedicated themselves and, and, and amazing fruit was able to happen because of people such as Michael and Maria and the incredible sacrifice they made for that region. So Thank you, kindly couple. God bless you. 
for all you've done. Through dedication, teaching, and service of our members, the local people came to understand them and gradually opened the doors to their hearts. And we heard this in Dr. Tyler, Dr. Kylie's testimony about how somehow he was able to stay in Tunisia. By the mid-1980s, these missionaries brought eminent Muslim clergy to our Assembly of the World's Religions and Council for the World's Religions conferences. And these clergy in turn brought Muslim citizens from the Middle East and North Africa, sometimes hundreds at a time, to attend 40-day principal workshops in New York in the early 1990s. Beginning in 1992, Islamic couples who were moved by the teachings of the principal greatly received the marriage blessing. And uh, so much of, of the work, the teaching of, of these, um, these Muslim leaders in the United States was, was done by uh, Dr. Taj Hamad and Dr. Frank uh, Kaufman. Um, yeah, they they did such a great job taking care of, of you know, basically they would, the, 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 the Muslim uh, leaders came to the U.S. and obviously they were steeped in their own theology and steeped in their own worldview. And it's not easy. It's not easy for, for Muslims to be able to open up and to be able to, uh, you know, to uh, to hear the principle. You know, there, there's a kind of a fear. And it's not just in Muslims. It's also in Christians, but fear that they might lose something by daring to venture outside the parameters of what they understand as being their salvation. But uh, Dr. Hamad and Dr. Kaufman did such a, a great job. I, I had a chance to uh, participate a little bit in a couple of those seminars. And really what they did is they were able to instill in those, um, those Muslims an appreciation for the value of the blessing. And you had these, these very distinguished Muslim leaders who were excited about the idea of blessed children. Somehow that that really grabbed them. They they could feel, oh, this is this is something very new. That actually it's possible to be completely pure, and and that this is this is possible because of the blessing that comes from Father and Mother Moon. So anyway, what a great job they did to find a way to translate the principle uh, to the Islamic world and to help those people to be able to, to receive the blessing. In 1992, I, I still remember being in Korea when. Um, so many of those Muslim couples came and received the blessing from our true parents. So, yeah, it was it was the time and the moment and the greatness of our true parents is that ability to be sensitive to the timing, God's timing, and to take advantage of that moment to be able to reach out to them. Finally, I want to invite you all to reflect upon uh, this uh, this passage. Even if there's only one person waiting to receive me, I consider it my mission as God's mediator, the only begotten daughter, to go to the ends of the earth to meet that person and open for him or her the gate of salvation. I was with uh, Mr. Saito this morning in uh, uh, in our, our sharing time, and he expressed his appreciation for the Death Valley Holy Salt, which we learned this weekend is not something that you sprinkle on your food. It's something that you carry with you that you can be able to find those people that are waiting, that are seeking an answer, that want to be able to receive and know. The prepared people that, that God needs and who need God. Basically, we need to be able to, to find those people. And I, I reflected as I prepared my, my words this morning about uh, the, the story of Zacchaeus. I think you all know about Zacchaeus. He he climbed up into a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. And I, th I think he felt, if I see him, I'll know who he is. And that Jesus goes by the, the sycamore tree and he looks up and he sees this man and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I need you to prepare uh, your, uh, your home because I'm going to be staying with you tonight. And I, I think about True Mother and I think about Pastor Radabe and... Uh, yeah, really, for mother, somehow she she could see that he was he was this kind of person that was waiting and prepared and ready to receive. And how many great things have been able to come because of the, the attention that mother gave to him. And she could somehow look into his heart, hear God's voice, appreciate the timing of the moment, 
and take advantage of, of that time. And I think part of this, this new Death Valley Holy Salt is to help each of us to be able to do that better and, and, uh, and be better representatives of true parents. So, um, and, and, and Zac Zacchaeus changed. People were critical of the fact that Jesus reached out to him. And it says here in Matthew 19, verses seven to nine, all the people saw the, the attention being paid to Zacchaeus by Jesus. And they began to mutter, He's, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Or if we think about the, the Apostle Paul, when we read uh, the book of Acts, we find that St. Paul was there at the time of the martyrdom of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. And uh, it doesn't say that he threw stones, but he was there. He, he was part of that. But there was something about him that, uh, that God and Jesus, spiritual Jesus, recognized that this was a very, very important person. For the future of Christianity. Where would Christianity be without Paul? It'd be a small, a small faith probably, but somehow Paul had these special gifts and Jesus recognized that and reached out to him. And the people that, that, that knew Paul's reputation, they were even very hesitant to want to, to, to have anything to do with him when they heard that he may have had a conversion experience. So I just invite you to read this passage with me from, uh, from the book of Acts. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something, so, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. So Saul, who had been blinded, by his encounter with Jesus, had received the revelation that, that a man by the name of Ananias was going to come and restore his sight. And not just restore his sight, but speaking on behalf of Jesus, explained to Saul what it was that he was called by Jesus to do for the, the providence as it was to go forward. So when Mother's talking about the person to receive me, that special person, she's talking about this, that there are receipt, there are prepared people out there that we need to find and bring home because they're lost, they're heartbroken, they're, un they're, they're unclear without that opportunity. Even if there's only one person waiting to receive me, I consider it my mission as God's mediator, the only begotten daughter, to go to the ends of the earth to meet that person and open for him or her the gate of salvation. So each of us is called to be true mothers on Aeneas in this providential time. Thank you very much. God bless everybody. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Ward, um, for those beautiful words and insights. And, you know, I just wanna share my gratitude for all these missionaries um, who are out there right now um, serving and sacrificing themselves, really trying to find the right people to share the words. And my sisters right now are in missionary in Austria and Romania. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, my sister had a workshop and there was about five members that they did a two day workshop. And on Sunday, 
they proclaimed who the Messiah was and um, listening to their stories and hearing, you know, they finding these people were in the randomest places, um, but they could really feel that they were ready to receive um, the true parents and heavenly parent and listening to their stories and the way they're opening up their hearts and they're realizing who the true parents are is not only changing my sibling's life, but they're the people that they're meeting their lives. Um, so, you know, I'm really grateful to listen to these stories and actually see it happening right now with my own siblings um, and seeing the people that they're reaching out and proclaiming who the true parents are. But thank you so much for today. Thank you very much, Jeanette. And thank you for your siblings being out there on the front line. It's so exciting that we have a new generation doing this. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so unfortunately, due to time, uh, we actually won't be going into our breakout rooms, but please feel free to share any key takeaways, insights in their chat so we can all read and take away all your other insights that you got today. Um, we will now be passing it on to Pastor Takino um, for a closing prayer and any announcements. Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you very much. Every day you are devotion. I believe that the sincere devotion moves the heart of God. Without moving the heart of God, we can move the heart of the people. So that's why this kind of the devotion is very important to God can take, I believe. Okay, yeah. So, April 16, uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, many of us, especially next generation and the clergy, going to Korea to have opportunity to celebrate true parents' holy marriage and uh, attending to the cosmic blessing. And uh, I will hope we all the American members can meet with true mother and would like to share we are here uh, as a Sun nation to support true mother. So this is the hot, the hot days, special devotional period, uh, prayer point for the safety of the true parents. So the true parents and the true family or a victorious entrance into the Chong Il Sanctum in Chong Wong To successfully witness to new people, especially young people, and for real church growth. For the unification of North and South Korea and the heavenly unified Korea. To overcome all crises affecting our world and to realize a heavenly unified world. Thank you. We had a victorious, successful Blue Dragon Tour. Amazing, amazing three days. And we truly appreciate Reverend Dunkley. He was really sick at that time. Uh, but he come every day. He, he invested more than 100% he sharing with us. So we had a Berber New Jersey Church, uh, Berber Family Church and KA Church. And here, how God was working with us. Show, show God love. You know, that this is that we took the picture Friday. Behind the KA Church, we see double rainbow. Nice. And also, Oh, yes. Right. And also, uh, one of that special answer sister told us, when we really, really, really dedicate sincerely devotion, then you will, you will see the, one of the, you will see the string of the candle become heart mark. And we more pay attention. I will look at, after we had that, I look at that a candle. And uh, Monday morning, I saw candle was a heart mark. And I took the picture. I don't see this uh, orange or red color. When I saw the uh, physical my eye, but after I took the picture, I see the red mark. Heart. 
And this is actually true father's candle. So then I fell to the true father's lamp in New Jersey. I'm sorry, New Jersey, but anyway, we <laughs> So that's why I felt, thank you. And the uh, registration was uh, 684. 684 people registered online, Northeast region. New Jersey Family Church, 364. And the Belvedere charge 123, KA charge 64, online registration 133. And especially Sunday, we had a New Jersey family charge 454 people in person came to New Jersey family charge. And the Belvedere charge 138 people, KA charge 75 people, plus we had an online YouTube, 260 people. So one day, 863 people joined our Blue Dragon Tour Sunday, amazing Sunday service. Thank you very much. That was a victory because of all of you. You are sincere devotion every day, uh, morning and uh, evening. And the pastor now came me visited to the church to church before the Blue Dragon tour, a uh, local church. He did it amazing his schedule last three, three weeks. And uh, spiritual revelation, total 213 families. And the ancestor revelation, 22 families. So lateral revelation, 191 families. And the central evil spirit revelation, 151 people. So total, 1735 central evil spirit liberated last Saturday. That was amazing. This is actually the most biggest number of the you know uh, in the among the five five sub regions 1735 and 144 members received a special answer so we really appreciate the whole day from 8 a.m morning until 10 p.m the ancestor uh, the special answer she starts more than 120 percent they concentrate and they said you know that their hand is a god's hand the spiritual needle coming from their god's hand to you know, like not shifting then evil spirit go out he actually needle in the evil spirit the move bring out from the our body that's they're sharing us. That's why their Korea training is how to make a, how to become, how to create a God's hand. That's their training in Korea. We will have a next opportunity, June. We we'll have an ancestor blessing, um, the ancestor liberation and the blessing time. Uh, great work coming to, uh, Northeast region on June. And tonight, oh, so Pastor Naokimi decided we, because we, we all go to the Korea, so like today is the last day before we go to the Korea. The next 10 days, we will, we won't have a, a evening prayer vigil. Then when we come back, we will start a evening prayer vigil again. Today is the last day before we go to the, uh, uh, Korea. That's why everyone has an Aokimi inviting all of you and uh, she like to listen to your experience of the Blue Dragon Tour tonight from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So general community group, but we all, you know, we are welcome everyone. Please join this important prayer vigil and we will sh pray all the next generation and the clergies will have an amazing experience in Korea. So today's prayer is very important. Please come to our Christian church. 
or joined by do. Yes, so now we are preparing the, to go to the Korea. So New, uh, Northeast region 55, uh, next gen, uh, let's go, but at 65, next gen, we'll go to the Korea this time. And uh, so many people inspiring every day. Oh, you no, know, I was thinking I'm not interested, I'm not going to Korea, but I changed mine. What kind of the people every day? Now 65 people going to Korea. Even they had a school final exam or financial issues that they really felt, you know, that when true mother told us, or oh, we have an opportunity, we can't lose this opportunity. And some people say, oh, we have a next year. Some people say we have a, every year they have this kind of opportunity. But this year's experience only this year. Okay. Okay, so uh, today I like to invite uh, Mrs. Yoko Barnes. Okay, let's just pray. Dearest Heavenly Parent, thank you for this beautiful morning and all brothers and sisters gathered together with you, one heart, one mind, Heavenly Parent. We have uh, these three days, incredible, incredible experience. Center of uh, uh, Dr. Damian Dunkley. Even his uh, physical condition was so difficult, but he put so much heart and so much effort because he's completely united with the true mother. He gave us all mother's heart, heavenly parent. We are so grateful. Yes. Uh, Heavenly Parent, Thank we are you. gathered together. We are inspired, and it's Chonshin Won, incredible your love in this prayer place that put the candle on. This candle was bright to all the people, the whole entire world, Heavenly Parent. Yes. We are so grateful. From tomorrow, the old leaders and the youth and the minister, the couple is going to Korea, our land of Korea, Heavenly Parent. Our all heart is longing for unity of North South Korea, Heavenly Parent. We really pray they can bring America all spirit to with them and bless the all the Korea and true mother. Our sincere heart and love to please bring to true mother. Thank you so much of this spirit and our old brothers and sisters, sincere heart. I offer play Yoko Bans, Breast Central Family. Adieu. 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 Please feel free to unmute for units in prayer. Morning, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you everyone for the unison prayer and thank you everyone for joining us here today. I hope to see everyone tomorrow and I hope everyone has a happy Tuesday. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Love you guys. God bless you. Oh, have a wonderful have day. Have a good day. Happy Tuesday. Have a great day.